Hey, welcome back to my video series, What's So Great About Evolution, Part 3 of 3. If you haven't seen Parts 1 and 2, it might be a good idea to look at those first and then come back to Part 3. So, what would constitute legitimate scientific evidence against evolution? If you keep up with any of the work done by the creation science or intelligent design movements, then you've probably heard that there are mountains of evidence that disprove evolutionary theory. And if evolution were in fact false, then it should be one of the easiest things to refute. For instance, if any organism or fossil were discovered to have characteristics or features that didn't fit the pattern of nested groups, this could be proof against evolution. But so far, of the 1.5 million species that have been discovered and classified, not one of these qualifies as proof against evolution. Another way to refute evolution would be to discover a population of fossils in a layer of earth below that of their biological ancestors. But again, such a thing as this has yet to be found. And finally, if DNA testing of the species were not able to trace different genetic markers through the same patterns of nested biological groups that are inferred by comparative anatomy, then this too would be unmistakable proof against evolution. But as we've already seen, DNA testing overwhelmingly confirms the relationships between the species. Despite all of the supporting evidence, there are no sacred theories in science. Anything in science can eventually be proven false. All you need is data. In fact, whenever something new is discovered in biology, it has the potential to refute the entire evolutionary model. So evolution, like any scientific model, has to continually defend itself against an inherently skeptical scientific community. Now, I only mention this because many people have been led to believe that the theory of evolution is just a vast conspiracy against any belief in God and has no scientific basis whatsoever, but that's absurd. The potential fame and fortune that awaits anyone who can provide enough scientific evidence to overturn an accepted truth is simply too great to pass up. But the fact that the theory of evolution has endured a century and a half of scientific challenge is a testament to its usefulness. Let's look at just one more example of this. Doctors have known for a long time that humans must consume vitamin C as part of their diet. But what many people don't know is that unlike other mammals, every species within the primate group also lacks the ability to synthesize vitamin C. This includes apes, monkeys, chimpanzees, orangutans, lemurs, gorillas, etc. Now why is that? Well, if every species were created separately, then you'd have to conclude that for some reason God mysteriously created primates without this ability, but gave it to other mammals. Does that make any sense whatsoever? I mean, certainly that's within God's prerogative since he alone is God, but is there a better way to explain this? Perhaps a more scientific way? Well, there certainly is. If the theory of evolution is true, then all primates share a common ancestor who, for whatever reason, could not synthesize vitamin C and that would explain why all of their descendants also lack this ability. But since the primate group also shares a common ancestor with other mammals who can synthesize vitamin C, then something must have happened early in the primate lineage that switched off this ability. Now, at this point, some people might say, yeah, but that explanation is simply begging the question. I mean, there's no way to really know if that claim is right since we can't go back and see what actually happened. But that's simply not true. You see, by sequencing the primate genome and comparing it to other mammals, we can verify if the predictions made by evolutionary theory are true or false. And since evolution has no way to remove unused genes from our DNA, and since genes can't just mysteriously disappear by themselves, primates alive today should have non-functional copies of the same genes that other mammals use to synthesize vitamin C. And if we can't find this information in the primate genome, then evolution's in big trouble. As it turns out, primates alive today have all three genes necessary to synthesize vitamin C. But the last gene in the sequence was switched off by a single point mutation, rendering the entire process obsolete. But amazingly, every primate species has this exact same point mutation in the exact same location on the exact same gene. Now why is that? Did God put that there to fool us? Well, I don't think so and the odds of the exact same mutation occurring in the exact same gene in every primate by chance are astronomical. The special creation model can account for this, but if we all share a common ancestor who passed this mutation down to all primates alive today, then it makes perfect sense. And since the primate diet must have already been rich in vitamin C, 
natural selection could not stop this defect from being passed down. Those of you who keep up with the latest discoveries in biology know that this example is just one among thousands. So what do creation scientists offer as proof against evolution? Well, take a look at this chart. One tactic is to point to any link between species and say, yes, but have you found this one yet? Or have you found that one yet? But remember, these relationships have been measured with greater precision than any other physical constants of nature. Not finding a transitional species that should have once existed isn't proof against evolution. The only thing this demonstrates is that perhaps none of these creatures were fossilized, or perhaps we just don't know quite where to look yet. But given all of the transitional forms that have been found over the last 25 years, there is a very good chance that some of these other transitional forms will be found. Another popular tactic is to pick any point along one of these lines and say, yes, but how do you explain how this species evolved from this one, or how this organ came to be? But not being able to explain exactly how something might have evolved isn't proof against evolution. All this proves is that there is more work to do. The issue of exactly how something might have evolved is completely different from the question of whether it did or did not happen. Lots of things in nature happen that we can't account for. This is nothing unique to the biological sciences. For instance, after 500 years, physicists still can't explain what causes gravity. But since we can still observe that gravity is real, we just keep searching for answers. The 21st century picture of evolution is a lot like this puzzle here and much of the so-called evidence against evolution is based on ignorance or lack of knowledge represented here by the missing puzzle pieces and even though this puzzle here is only partially complete you can easily tell that it is a picture of water lilies now we can argue about whether this area here has two lilies or three lilies or whether there might be a frog or insect in this section here but there should be no debate that this is a picture of water lilies now, if someone claimed that we shouldn't conclude that this puzzle is a picture of water lilies just because we don't yet know exactly what this piece here looks like, we wouldn't take them seriously. And if they tried to tell us that this was actually a picture of an apple orchard, and the fact that we don't know how many lilies are in this section here proves that we could be wrong about the whole puzzle, well, we would see right through this foolishness. But these are the exact tactics used against evolution by the creation science and intelligent design movements. Unfortunately, many Christians do not have the scientific background to see through these types of arguments. So, if evolution is true, then what about the Bible? I mean, for Christians who don't have to worry about biology on a daily basis, this really is the heart of the matter. But the answer to this question is so obvious that, after hearing it for the first time, most people can't understand why they didn't think of it themselves. But for that, you'll have to get my book, Beyond the Firmament, on Amazon.com, or watch some of my other videos at www.beyondthefirmament.com. I'm Gordon J. Glover. Thanks for watching.